This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 514, Reader Case Study. Yeah, but how about a difficult life? Part one by Mr. Money Mustache of mrmoneymustache.com. And I'm Dan, your host and narrator, bringing you some of the best blogs on personal finance each weekday. And before we get to today's post, if you want to connect with a bunch of like-minded people, including some of the hosts in the old podcast family, and be entered into bonus book raffles, come join our Facebook group. The shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. But for now, let's get to our post as we start optimizing your life. Reader Case Study. Yeah, but how about a difficult life? Part one by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. Despite the fact that he wears mostly ripped jeans and installs his own sewer pipes, Mr. Money Mustache is occasionally accused of being a privileged upper-middle-class elitist who doesn't understand the problems of real people. So this week, we look at a call for advice from a reader with more challenge packed into her life than some of our past studies. Quote, Dear MMM, I've been reading your reader case studies and rolling my eyes here. Let's get real, not everyone in this world has a combined income of $100,000, nor do they not have kids or even just one baby. Please, most people are raised without a lick of finances in their head. They only figure them out after receiving large amounts of debt. But by then, it feels too late to change the tide. Most people get married when they're in their 20s, then in a year or two, they have a baby, making mom's education worthless for income, while dad tries to grow up overnight into the $50,000 a year income he would like. Everyone harps on the new parents. Your kids need to be socialized, put them in daycare. Your kids should play t-ball, dance, soccer, and photography. Meanwhile, mom and dad decide they enjoy the babe and have more. Now they have four. While dad works to pay off the hard lessons of debt, he supports the family on about $50,000 a year. This is reality for most people and for me. I wanted to challenge you to do a reader case study on real people who have it hard not easy ones who make over 100,000 a year, and you're thinking, no kidding, get rid of the Hummer. I will type out my budget so you can see where you can trim the fat for a challenge. Not because I feel that I really need the help, but you never know. Income, currently $50,000. Cars, we own two, a Suburban paid cash in order to drive once a week as a family or haul our trailer to the dump. Please note my husband is a dealer for a tool company. It's a franchise. The amount of cardboard we recycle fills a 10-foot by 10-foot trailer every two weeks. The recycle center is 20 minutes from the house. I never go that way unless it's to recycle. We own a gas saver car that gets 30 mpg and can fit in a tight squeeze, all six of us. We paid cash for this car and use it as the main car. House, $1,275. We tried to rent cheaper. They count the number of people living in a small apartment and there is a bit of a rush for rentals. After trying to be as cheap as possible, we rented for $1,500 plus utilities. Thus, we bought a foreclosure to fix up ourselves. At the peak, this house was worth $300,000. When we bought it, the appraisal was $200,000 and we paid $180,000 at 4.1% interest with no PMI. Food, $1,000 a month. We eat mostly veggies, fruit, and free-range type meat. We do not buy prepackaged things. I am just feeding five boys. The government allows $150 per person on food stamps. We do 166. The extra is to allow for personal hygiene and snacks for extra activities. We do Cub Scouts once a week. The boys earn their own money to pay for it, and the snacks are for times when we have to run far from home, say 20 minutes. Unavoidably, the children get hungry, and so does my husband, every time. Here is the rest of the budget. Gas, $100. Insurance, 160. Student loan, 90, $8,000 left. Bad debt, 570. I don't want to talk about bad choices. Life insurance, 35. Food, 1,000. House payment, 1275. Trash, 25. Water, free. I have a well. Electric, 150. I know this is high. It's a remodel and it's getting better every month. Phone and internet, 80. Medical, 80. Cell phone, 170. My husband has one for his work. I'm going to look into what you suggested before with Google. I just haven't yet. Total, $3,735. That leaves a difference of 529 to cover clothes, shoes, and life. However, through it all, we managed to save $5,000 this year and used it to pay down debt. Good luck. SF, end quote. MMM replies, Dear SF, I'll admit that your situation is not trivially easy like most of the financial problems of the middle class. And part of the challenge is that, for the most part, you've started running things pretty well already. 
You got what sounds like a great deal on a house with some upside and the opportunity to build sweat equity with your own labor while you live there. You raise four kids on less than what some people spend on themselves. You have no car loans, small student loans, and aren't blowing money by putting lottery tickets, booze, and manicures on credit. But here's what you can do. The bad debt. This is a recurring theme in emails I get these days. People have credit card debt, often at interest rates above 15%, and yet they are still going along merrily building an emergency fund in a 0% savings account, making extra payments on other debts or cars or 401ks, or doing renovations. So let me remind you once again, credit card debt is an emergency. It goes out first before you engage in any other activity. Do not write to Mr. Money Mustache for advice if you still have credit card debt. My advice is, Tap all possible resources up to and including couch surfing, prostitution, and illegal drug and organ sales to pay off your credit card debt first. After that, we can start fixing the rest of your life. Since you weren't an MMM reader when this was racked up, you are hereby forgiven for whatever you did. But a $570 per month payment at your level of income is spectacularly high, and thus it needs to be treated like an emergency. If you're not already doing so, all extra payments should go to this high interest loan while making only minimum payments on the student loan and mortgage. And any luxuries that can be cut or savings made, which I'll talk about later, should be fired at this debt too. The cars. Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Reader Case Study. Yeah, but how about a difficult life? By Mr. Money Mustache of mrmoneymustache.com. And I'm going to finish up that post for you in tomorrow's episode, but before we go, I want to remind you one more time that you can be part of our free Facebook group to be in bonus book raffles, ask and answer questions, and participate in conversations with a few of the hosts of our shows. All you have to do is search for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts in Facebook and then request to join the group, or you can use the shortcut link, which is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. And that'll do it for another installment of Optimal Finance Daily. Thanks, as always, for being here and listening. Have a happy Thursday, and I'll see you in the Friday show tomorrow. That's where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.